Welcome to the Shepherd's Heart. We have been looking at leaders that are called judges in the Old Testament and seeking to learn from their lives and to apply things that can help us to serve God better, but to serve humanity as well better in our different roles as leaders. We've been journeying through the book of Judges. The time is described as one where Israel had no leaders and each man did what was right in his own eyes. Total chaos. The last judge is actually not in the book of Judges. It's in a book by his own name, 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel. His story is also recorded in other books of the Bible. But if you are a reader of the Bible, why don't you turn to 1 Samuel and the first you know, three, four chapters just helps us to know how this began. Today we look at a very important aspect of a leader's life and we see it through Samuel's life. Samuel is very young. Remember that he was a child of promise to a barren mother and a father who had uh, another wife and had children with that wife. And so he grows up in this environment um, that one would imagine, you know, just how precious he was to his mother. After winning him, she takes him to the temple. And every year when she went for the festival, she would take him, you know, new garments. Just imagine that close relationship. But he's in the temple serving under the, the, the priest who is, uh, has been appointed at that time. It is Eli. And Eli, uh, you know, is a, is a good priest. He's God's man. But he has sons who are supposed to take over from him. But they are wild. They are, they, are, they are not deserving and God does not consider them in the succession process. But in the cacophony of that noise, we see Samuel hearing the voice of God. Now you may wonder, how does that affect cocoa growing in Ghana? Well, let me suggest to you that one of the toughest things in leadership, and I have not been a leader for a long time, unless you count dining hall captain and those kind of leadership opportunities. But I am leading at the church now, and it's not been very long when we are recording this. I'm just beginning my second year. But I've realized one of the crucial things is actually to distinguish the voice of God, to distinguish the voice that God is directing you from the cacophony of voices around you. I like that word cacophony because earlier on when I were in primary, there was this cartoon, um, you know, thing that we used to read that had a character called cacophonics and his style of music was just noise. And so later on when I, 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 I learned this word cacophony, it describes best what happens in leadership. You have the voices of those who are against you, those who are plotting against you and somehow those voices stay a little longer and they are a little louder. And then you have voices of your own incapacity, the way you have gaps, where you have issues of family issues and origin issues and, you know, personal issues, and you have that noise. And then you have noise of those who are cheering you on, who are saying, you're moving too slowly, you know, keep, keep going. And in that cacophony of noise, how do you tell the true north? How do you hear the voice of God? Well, this young boy hears his name, Samuel, Samuel. And thinking that it is Eli, because they were in separate quarters, he goes to Eli's quarter and asks, hey, here I am, you are calling me. He says, no, <coughs> young boy, just go, just go and sleep, it's okay. And it happens another time. And he goes back to Eli, uh, you are calling me, I, I heard you calling me. No, 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 just go and, and sleep. And then Eli realizes, ha, huh, the Lord is calling this young boy. And he instructs him, when you hear the voice, say, Master, here I am. Speak, your servant is listening. And that is when Samuel is able to get, you know, what God is telling him, to hear the voice of God, to know it is a voice of God, and to be able to know, what is to happen. The news that is downloaded from God's heart to him is in terabytes. Too, too much for the capacity of this young boy. But because he knew it was from the Lord, he's able to incubate it 
incubate it even when when Samuel when Eli asked what did the Lord say he's able to to to, to share that in a way that's honorable and, dis- and respectful but able to incubate because he d- he he discerned that was the voice of God from that day when he was anointed by God to the day God appoints him and so I wanted to say to us are you a leader in your institution in your family in the different context that God has put you make sure that you're able to distinguish and hear the voice of God to know the true north to know the path that is taking you amidst all these noises Tito Malinda is an academic. He is a, a teacher at a world famous school. Those of you who have been to Harvard or Yale, you probably know about the school where uh, Tito uh, teaches. He is one of our youth members here at Nairobi Baptist Church. He studied to teach mathematics and music. He is a musician in his own right and um, has, you know, led worship here at the church but also different concerts, and we thank God uh, for him. Um, welcome to the Shepherd's Heart. Thank you. It is rare to get you, so this is, this is wonderful. Uh, Mwalimu, it's, it's, it's also, we're talking about leaders who mm-hmm. are appointed when they are younger. Mm-hmm. And so it is good to see a leader in society and in the school where you teach mm-hmm. and with your wonderful hairstyle. In my day, I remember when, when you and I went to visit my mom, mom, who was a, a teacher, and she was like, you're a teacher. <laughs> and she was, she was about to lose it, you know, a teacher with, with hair, you know? <laughs> yeah, but tell me, what, what did you think about leadership and the story of Samuel? And then you can ask any questions that you may have. All right. Um, I think I've always found it fascinating mm-hmm. that he really was young. I mean, I don't know if we have an estimate of how old he would have been, but I don't know, I guess maybe less than 10, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, you're right, spot on. And, and then, when, as you said, when you read through the book of First Samuel until the time he dies, he really led for a long time. And the testimony that he himself gives that, none of his words ever yeah. fell to the ground. It's just yeah. incredible that, mm. you know, he led for that long and he was a faithful leader in that sense. Yeah, yeah. that's true. And y- you know him well. I mean... Uh, that's one of the key verses in, mm. in Samuel's life that the Lord did not allow even one of his words fall to the okay. ground. I mean, that's that's big. Yes. And um, and when he's leaving, he's also he also makes it clear. Is there anything that I did that mm. was amiss? You know. Tell me. Yeah. 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 But yeah. any questions on his hearing God's voice and that role of uh, hearing God's voice for a leader? Mm. Yeah. I think I, I wonder. Um, do you think that? a leader would need an Eli in their life to point them to God. Okay. Or do you think you could kind of survive hack without, it. yeah, hack <laughs> it without an Eli to tell you, no, I think you need to turn yeah. to God. First, I think Eli's are very hard to find. Mm. Most of the older men, e- even in Christian society, mm-hmm. um, tend to doubt younger leaders, mm. you know? And so where Eli told Samuel, go to sleep, um, this one would have said, go and black out, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and don't um, come. Back. Yeah. Or um, would be too insecure mm. to want to point him the right way. Mm. Um, but, but, you know, the whole idea of hearing God's voice, it's one that's fairly, you know, mystical in our society. Yes. But you point out a very important factor of hearing God's voice, that you need those who point you to position yourself ready to hear mm-hmm. God's voice, you know. And Samuel was privileged. He would have been going up and down the whole night if Eli didn't realize this is the voice of God. Mm-hmm. Now, Eli didn't tell him, this is what God wants from you. He, right. he didn't pontificate. He didn't try to obscure God. He didn't want to replace God. He just directed him, go and listen, you know. And I don't think that we can survive as leaders mm-hmm. At least not to the point where none of our words fall to the ground. If we don't have somebody older than us or a group of them older Mm -hmm. than us, trustworthy men who have been in the presence of God and are not trying to make their presence of God to be our presence of God, Mm -hmm. but are willing to point us for us to have an experience 
of hearing God. Because leadership is like a compass yeah. that is surrounded by magnets. A cacophony of voices. <laughs> and, and the needle of the magnet is just going round and round, round. Because, you know, where is true north? Yeah. But if you have somebody who tells you, hey, this is... listen mm. and say, master, I am here. Because they can tell you, listen to an advert, you know. And that won't be the voice of God, mm. you know. But they direct you to listen to God. Yeah, that's what I think. Okay. I think the other thing that comes to mind is maybe trusting that you had, right? And you did touch on that. I mean, because when Samuel had, he, he took it in. And though it wasn't pleasant news to share with Eli, he ended up sharing. But also, how do you trust that you had right? Okay. Yeah. It's easy for us. You know, in the past, he spoke through dreams and, mm -hmm. you know, visions. But it, like it says, in the last days, he has spoken to us through his son, mm -hmm. you know, and through, you know, the recorded word. So it's here, Genesis to Revelation, mm -hmm. the voice of God is here. But I find it interesting and something we can learn from Samuel. Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll be exaggerating when we say, not only did he know the voice of God from the who, in his life, mm -hmm. but also from the where in his life. Mm. Where was Somewhere. Samuel sleeping? Mm. In the inner core where the lamp of the Lord never went out. Yeah, he was in the presence of God. Mm. Now, the unfortunate thing is that you and I want to be in all other places, not wrong places, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> normal places and to hear the voice of God mm -hmm. without having times in our day, without having t entire times in our week, without having entire times in our month that we dedicate to be um, in the presence of God. Uh, I, I was just, my hands were moving because of sign language, you know, to be in the presence of mm -hmm. God, you know, uh, face to face with God. Um, because of being in that uh, place, he was at the right place to hear God mm -hmm. and not to be confused by the voices. Mm -hmm. And I think apart from the who, the where yeah, matters. Yeah. Um, we are too absent from God's word um, regularly to be able to, when something comes, we can't tell is this the voice of God or not. Mm -hmm. So we ignore what God is saying because we're not sure. Or we take up that which we think is God's, God's voice. voice. The hymn writer, and I've quoted this hymn far too many times on this program, when we walk with the Lord mm -hmm. in the light of his word, word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust, trust and, and obey. obey. You see, hearing God's voice is not as complex as we make it. Mm -hmm. When we are out there, um, in the story of the prodigal son, eating pig's food, you know, and 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 serving in in a pigsty. Mm -hmm. It's until we come to our senses and we say, ah, then we are in the presence where we can hear mm -hmm. the who and the where, where? the shepherd's heart. Mm -hmm.